I feel so honored and humbled to be part of this tribe, the AFES family. <laughs> Every time I come and see any one of your eyes walking, I see open hearts, and you know, this is what the world needs. And I really know that we are like the eagles flying into one nest, and we'll fly wherever we come from, spreading that love. And the only thing we have to do is be our authentic selves, because when we are authentic selves, you know, there's no need for mask. There's no need for pretending. There's no need for lying. And there's no need for negativity in our life. Because when we open our hearts, we begin to feel the positivity running through our veins. And our body begins to feel so emotional that it begins to merge and making love to the soul, to everything. Because we know that our essence creates love. So why should we go thirsty of love when we create it? And then we have the perfect opportunity to come to this earth to take care of the love of our life which is ourselves, and we cannot give what we don't have. So when we give this love to ourselves, we give it to our families, to our brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter what belief they have. It doesn't matter what religion, what sexual they are. No, what matters it is that there's open heart because one day I bit the apple and I fell into judgment and I begin judging myself. And then one day I woke up and said, oh my God, Judgment is nothing more than an illusion. It was here before we were born. It's here when we are alive and it will exist after we die. So why waste an inch of our life supporting this illusion? From this point on, we will break the curse of the scorpion that stung itself with its own tail in the middle of the desert in Sonora because we have woken up. And I'm not sorry to say this. Once you wake up, you can never go back to sleep. And then your soul begins to feel the quest that you're about to take. Without any expectation, you're ready for life. Because we all know we work for the same boss. We may think we're going to the left, but the boss makes us go to the right. But if we're always prepared and open-hearted, we are home wherever we go. And this is the dream of the eagles. Because the dream of the eagles live in love. And when two eagles are in love, they're not flying with chains controlling each other, no. They're letting one be free because the nest will always be there waiting for the love, waiting for the presence, waiting to put the gifts that we have. And what is our gift? Well, it's our message. But what message is it really? We all are messengers, but what kind of messengers are we? What is the message that we give to ourselves and to the people that we say we love with all our heart? We don't have to answer out loud. We can answer within ourselves. And if we like that message, we continue. But if we don't like the message, we can change it because we are the storytellers and we can change any story. That's why in the Totec tradition, the teachings are so simple. In the Totec tradition, there's nothing to learn, only to unlearn. Unlearn what? What takes our inspiration away. Because the word Totec, it means Artist, artist of the spirit, for we are always creating. And the moment that we return back home, and when I mean back home, is when we return back to open-hearted way of life, we begin to expand a message. We expand the art that comes from the heart into the mind. So this is the challenge of the Toltec. How are you going to express your love? How are you going to express in words your romance, your soul, your inspiration, your dream, and the moment that you connect with the heart in your mind. There is nothing stopping you, because remember, you broke the curse of the scorpion that stung over his own tail. So if it was doubt that got us into suffering, then it will be doubt that get us back into heaven. And you know what? Heaven has always been here. This is our body. And our soul is the angel that steps into this body that to take care of the love of the life, which is heaven. And there is no doubt that's why when we look into the mirror and we see our own reflection, sometimes we imagine that we've never seen a reflection before, but it looks deeply in the eyes. It looks deeply with those beautiful eyes at us saying, I will be loyal to you wherever you take me. 
If you take me to suffering, if you take me to drama, I will be there because I love you. And you know what? It's just waiting for us patiently to return back home. Because I remember when I woke up, I said, oh my God, my body served me all my life. Now it's time for my mind to serve my body. No matter if it's broken, it will be the healing force. Because we are the healers, and the true healers heal themselves from their own lies, which it is to not believe in lies. And from this point on, the quest of our life is completely open because we got inspired. We got inspired by life because we feel life inside of us. And there is nothing stopping us because we don't believe in judgment anymore. And this is what I dream with imagination, what Siddhartha felt under the body tree. He was living in his heaven when all the judges, when all the negativity come with Mara trying to break his faith and they couldn't. Finally, they took the poison arrows with fire in them and just shot up at Siddhartha. Siddhartha peacefully sent them love and before the arrows hit them, he turned them into roses because he understands the power of forgiveness because he understood also that there's an addiction in this world and that addiction is of suffering. And when people get infected by addiction of suffering, they say things that they not mean. That's why when you see somebody saying mean things to you or being mad or screaming, cursing, they're just asking for help because they're possessed. And how do we know this? Because we were there once too. And going into that underworld, into the darkness, make us appreciate that light within us because the Savior was never outside. It was just inside of us all the time, ready to make a decision, ready to make an act of power. And an act of power is an act of love. So this is why we can never go thirsty, because we create that love. We have all the answers. So many times we disrespect ourselves by not believing that we are love. But when we're skeptical of our own negativity, everything begins to change. I remember when I said to one of my friends what the fifth agreement was, and it is to be skeptical, but learn to listen. And my friend said, Jose, being skeptical sounds negative. And I said, yeah, it might be negative if you think negative. But just imagine if you think positive all the time and you have one negative thought, you're skeptical to that negativity and you don't bite that apple. Because when you bite that apple, you put a spell on yourself because wherever we put our attention, that is what we're going to perceive. So sometimes the body gets nervous. Sometimes the body feels afraid. Sometimes the body feels happy. And when I feel this, I totally woke up and said, oh my God, I'm having a conversation with the creator. It's not in English, it's not in Spanish, it's not in Spanglish. <laughs> but it's learning to listen. Learning to listen to the love of our life. If I'm nervous, if I feel afraid, I will say to the love of my life, don't worry, I am here. Don't worry, I will walk on fire for you. And this is what the real meaning of walking on fire it is. When you walk with heartbreak and nothing's going to stop the faith from coming out of you. That's why sometimes you see in a cathedral church, some saint, a priest, or a nun praying to, up to the skies with a dagger in the heart because it means that nothing, no heartbreak will break its faith because it knows that it's part of life. And when you know that that is part of life, then you wake up knowing that the art of happiness, first rule, it is that we're not happy all the time. And having that awareness, the next time that we become unhappy, we know the cycle. And we're ready to serve the love of our life. I remember a beautiful dream. A beautiful dream that I had a long time ago. I was walking in the desert with my ex-wife. And all of a sudden, I see a big line of souls ready to enter a cave. And I ask my ex-wife, can you do me the biggest favor? Can you get all of those souls and take them to the sun? I will enter for them. And like in seconds, she was gone with all the souls and I was in front of the cave and I felt fear. But I said to myself, if something happened to me, I will only go back home. And in that moment, I get inside the cave. And when I entered the cave, it was like I entered a mitote room. A mitote is like you hear a thousand voices speaking at the same time. And then I put attention to one voice. 
And that voice is speaking a story of suffering that I went through. And I said, okay, I take my attention away and I look around someplace else and it's the same thing. And then I say, okay, these things are not real. These things are already passed. So I begin screaming like a madman. Who is in charge of this place? Who is in charge of this place? I want to see you right now. These old things are a legion. They're not real anymore. And then all of a sudden, I woke up in the same dream. And when I woke up in the same dream, there it was. The big horns, the black obsidian eyes, the red face, the long hair. And then he looked at me directly and said to me, how dare you? How dare you take what I feed upon and take them to the sun? Those souls, they're mine. And I, I responded quietly. You have forgotten, haven't you? Those souls don't belong to you. They belong to the sun. Like I belong to the sun. And like you belong to the sun. In that moment, it started to laugh. It started to laugh in mockery, trying to break my fate. I felt the fear, I felt the nervous, but I say it to my ground. If something happened to me, I will only go back home. And in that moment, the demon jumped and bite me. In that moment, I surrendered. I said, this is the last thing I will do. I will hug this demon and just surrender in his arms and go back home. And in that moment, I just surrendered. And all of a sudden, I woke up again in the same dream. I took a step back. There was no longer a demon in front of me. It was a seven-year-old Jose that turned into an 11-year-old Jose that turned into a 17-year-old Jose that turned into the age where I was actually. And then he said to me, thank you for coming back for us. And I responded, us? Yes, us, all those souls ready to enter the cave was nobody else's souls. It was our own soul, one for each day of our life. Thank you for coming back for us. And in that moment, I woke up. And when I woke up, I had lost my eyesight some weeks before. And in that moment that I woke up, I could see a little bit that I went to the mirror and I looked into that reflection. And just like I said before, it was like I've never seen that reflection before that was looking at me with such love. And then is when I said, okay, I'm ready to live my quest now. I'm ready to prepare myself to take care of the love of my life. And like I said before, in the Totec tradition, there's nothing to learn but to unlearn how we go against ourselves. Because when we get awareness, we wake up. And this is why I say, when you wake up, you cannot go back to sleep. You can find yourself in ghost town. What do I mean ghost town? In a place that you don't belong there anymore, that the Totec called the island of safety, a place that we're used to, a pain that we're used to. We're afraid of the unknown, so we stay in that island of safety. But do we really belong there? Would you really put your kids in an island of safety or your loved ones in an island of safety because you feel so much fear? No. With all the love gives you courage. Just like Mama Jaguar has the courage to protect her cubs. Well, guess what? Mother lives inside of us all. No matter if you're female or male, it doesn't matter. It runs through us. And from this point on, we completely wake up. I remember when I was having a difficult time and one of my good friends, you know, passed away. And uh, my father uh, wrote a book called The Four Agreements. And for the longest time, I didn't want to read it. Like my brother says, you know, why do I want to read a book that tells me what to do? My dad telling me what to do when he's already telling me what to do in life, you know? <laughs> but when I was hurting, when I was hurting, I read that book. And I confess, I don't read a lot of books, but that book, I read it from beginning to end. And, and I was just in, in awe. I went up to him and I said to my father, Father, I know this information. I know it. And he puts a big smile on his face and says, of course you know it. Everyone knows it. Because it's integrity talking to integrity. And then, you know, I said, okay, piece of cake. Piece of cake. I'm going to master these agreements. And, you know, and I begin practicing them. And then one month later, I go to my father's father. These agreements are very difficult. <laughs> and he's responded, no, they're very simple. What is difficult is what you have made agreements to in life. That is what you need to let go of. And I remember trying to let go of it, that I begin, you know, meditating. I begin meditating. I was, you know, kind of nervous to be out in the world that I prefer to meditate. And I meditated like for two or eight hours a day. 
Then one day, my father knocked on the door. And he said, Jose, what are you doing? And I said, I'm meditating because I'm transcending. And he goes, no, you're not. <laughs> and he goes, what do you mean? He was always pushing my buttons to react. <laughs> and when I said, what do you mean? I'm meditating. I'm here all these hours. He says, no, what you're doing is abusing meditation. <laughs> and I was shocked to hear that. And he goes, what do you mean I'm abusing meditation? Yes, because you prefer to be locked in this room with your eyes closed instead of being out in life with your heart open. So if you still consider me your teacher, I'll give you one more assignment. You will take it, son? I said, of course, Father, always. Okay, it's time for you to meditate with your eyes open. Keep the same peaceful that you have when you're meditating in front of the altars. Open your eyes and walk with it. Nothing can break the silence, son. Everybody's dreaming in life. Don't let anybody uninspire you because you will do damage to yourself. And then from that point on, I make a prayer every morning that I wake up and that goes, may life protect me from myself because I know that I was my own enemy. I was my own tyrant. And if I was my own tyrant, that means that I'm my own savior as well. Then I begin practicing being impeccable with my word. And being impeccable with my word, you know, it was to not corrupt the word, to do harm to myself and to others. Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and God represents creation. When did we begin abusing that creation? When we believe in lies. That's why I was full of lies in my head. That's why I was hurting myself. But the moment I began practicing and catching myself, something magical began happening. When we begin practicing the impeccability of the word, something magical happens inside our mind is that we begin thinking impeccably. And when you think impeccably, you cannot even say a little white lie because you feel so uncomfortable. And this is what I really understand from studying many traditions is that the ultimate spiritual awakening is to have a clean conscience. Because when you have a clean conscience, you know, you don't have to remember a lie you don't have to reprove everybody else. You just are with yourself. Just imagine what the Egyptians used to say. In order to enter heaven, your heart must be light as a feather. And of course, they were talking about the consciousness. Just imagine when you wake up one day with clean consciousness and you don't take anything personal anymore. It's because you have found forgiveness. Because you forgive yourself from using the word to go against yourself. And every time that we take something personal is because we're taking our so personal because we're giving power to that negativity. But what like I said before, when somebody says negative things to us, they're just asking for help. It's like somebody very upset is trying to make you react. It's no different when I saw the exorcist movie with my father. <laughs> because when I saw the exorcist movie with my father at the end of the movie, he said to me, how do you like that movie? And I said, oh, I loved it very much, you know, it was very scary. Well, the same way he said, I, I see the possessed little girl, I see you. And I'm like, <laughs> Papa, I'm not possessed by the devil, Papa. Yeah, you may not be possessed by the devil, but I invite you next time that you get very upset and you make a tantrum to look yourself in the mirror. <laughs> and one day I did that without knowing, and then I turn around, there was a mirror, and I see myself very, you know, very devilish, you know, very angry. So I was possessed. And that is the gift, you know, when we have everything in our power to heal ourselves, to take us back to center. And this is what I say, when you begin forgiving yourself, you let the world be. Because mother and father divine, they love all the children. No matter what they do, they love them all because they're all working for the same dream. And if father and mother can love all our brothers and sisters, why can't we love our brothers and sisters too? This is when we wake up. Like father says, imagine waking up in a room completely sober where everybody's completely drunk. This is sometimes how we feel with our love. This is why it's so beautiful to be in this room because everybody has open heart, you know. This is a beautiful thing because everyone's a messenger of love. And, you know, to not make assumptions for me was a big, big, big teaching because from this point on, I really understood that I was afraid of communicating, that I began making assumptions of stories that were not real 
And you know, because I was afraid of communicating. But the moment that I broke that, I really can speak to my loved ones what it is. In that way, it's about respect because it all goes to being pickled with the word. And to do our best is my dad's favorite agreement because without this one, the other ones don't exist. This is the act of the intent that we really are because this is what we really are. We are intent. Like I remember asking my father, oh, what makes me move my hands? When what makes me think this way? He says intent because this is what we really are. And that's why he says, I don't believe in the afterlife because we never die. We just move on with this energy that we are. And this is why we are all connected because we are the same soul. We are the same energy. Only the ego separates one from the other. But we are the same living being, living in a big dream. Because this dream is about heaven. And the ones sleeping inside heaven who have forgotten themselves. But one day we wake up to live the quest. Like I have a little story about the quest of Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent, Kulkulkan. It was a long time ago. The god of the rain, Talok, was sitting above a cloud in lotus position, just seeing all the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful lands. And then he got attention into Teotihuacan, the sacred temples of the Toltec. And then inside there, there was a little cave that he saw snakes coming in and out of. But his attention went to one particular little snake that was afraid to come out into the light. Then the god of the rain said, I will do everything in my power to help this little snake come out from darkness into light. So what did the god of rain do? He made it pour for months. And then that cave began feeling, 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 feeling. All the snakes started coming out. And the last snake to come out was the little one that was afraid of life. And finally, for the first time, the little snake is sliding, sliding in the dirt and just feeling the beautiful sun. And then he saw the beautiful quetzal birds, the beautiful colorful birds flying all around. And then another mature snake comes and approaches it. You like that bird, don't you? He said, yes, I love that bird. You want to fly like the bird, don't you? Yes, I want to fly like the bird. And the big snake said, then forget it. You are a snake. You will never fly. Broke his heart, broke his spirit, so the little snake went back, sliding back into his little hole, but there was no more little hole. It was full of water. So Tlaloc, in that moment, cleared the sky, beautiful blue sky with clouds passing by, and the little snake began seeing itself through the reflection. And he was seeing himself flying in the reflection of water. He was seeing the clouds pass, and he was seeing his own face flying. He said, you know what? I may not have wings, but I have imagination. And with the imagination, I can fly and do the impossible. In that moment, the look smiled and blew. And the snake went up into the air, went up into the air. So the little snake was flying finally. He was living his dream. He was living his quest, but not completely yet. Because when the moment that he saw the sun, nothing else existed. He saw the sun and went directly. Like a sperm went to an egg. The snake went to the sun. And then there was a full eclipse. And when the eclipse was over, Quetzalcoatl, feathered serpent, Kul Kul Khan came out of the sun, flying all around. And then he saw Teotihuacan and went flying there. But before he reached the ground, he got stopped by two archangels. And the two archangels said to Quetzalcoatl, it is an honor to see you once again, to feel your love, Quetzalcoatl. We would like to build your pyramid in Totihuacan. Where would you like to, your pyramid to be built? In the palace of the father, the palace of the mother, the palace of the truth? Where would you like it to be built? Quetzalcoatl looked down and he said, I would like my pyramid to be built in the plaza of hell. And the archangel said, why? Why in the plaza of hell? And Quetzalcoatl smiled. It's because heaven doesn't need heaven. Who needs heaven is hell. And wherever I go, I will take heaven with me. And he went to Teotihuacan, and this was the birth of the Toltec dream. For all of us, we are that energy. We are that awakening force, that feathered serpent that will do the impossible. Because we don't believe in stuff that will stop us. Because nothing will stop the fire within us to expand in this beautiful earth. And this expansion, it is our heaven. When we wake up, it doesn't matter what we do. 
Because nothing, no one can tell you what you're doing is not spiritual. Because common sense, everything that the body does is spiritual in action. And I will give a little example. It is because one time I was in Vancouver, Canada, giving a lecture. When I finished, this beautiful woman, a Tibetan bull master, asked me if she would like to give me a gift. And I said, oh, with pleasure, I would like to receive the gift. And she laid me on the floor, put like 20 Tibetan bulls around me, and begin hitting one by one. And every time she hit one, she went, oh, oh. And it went like for 40 or 50 minutes. I don't remember, but I remember when the sound stopped. I didn't want to open my eyes. But when finally I did open my eyes, I looked at her beautiful face and smile. And she asked me, how did you like that experience? And I said, I loved it so much that it reminded me of an Ozzy Osbourne concert. <laughs> so... When I said the word Ozzy Osbourne, her face got a little distorted. I said, I don't mean no disrespect. Let me explain to you why. It's because I love rock and roll since I was a kid, you know. And one time I went to see Ozzy Osbourne in concert, you know. And, uh, and, but before I went to see Ozzy Osbourne, I went to India. And in India, when I see Master Baba coming out to get his letters, all the people started clapping, 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 doing bhajans and singing Om and, you know, singing that energy vibration. So when I went to see Ozzy Osbourne, he was singing a song called Mama, I'm Coming Home. And the chorus goes, oh, Mama, I'm coming home, I'm coming home. So home sounded like an Om. And I was in the middle of the concert and I turned around and there's like 65,000 rock and roll fans oming with the awareness they're oming. They're just loving what they do. So that's a spiritual experience. That's why I say, you live your quest. You do what you love to do. And that is a spiritual experience. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And remember, when somebody else tells you, it's just their dream. It's just their offering. You don't have to believe them. You can be respectful. You don't have to debate them. Because when you know the truth, the truth doesn't care to be debated. The truth doesn't care to be put into battle. The truth just is. And it's like the sun that will melt everything which is not of unconditional love. And this is what happens when we open our heart. This is what happens when we become a tribe of love. And this is what happens when we master love. Because when we master love, it's because we master ourselves. So I repeat this question. How can you go thirsty when you produce love? And what kind of messenger are you? What is the message that you give to the people you say that you love with all your heart and especially to yourself? You're here in life for a purpose, to bring your heaven, to bring your love, and to share with everybody else because we all are creating a pyramid in our life. And you know what better thing to do it is than to share what we really are. This is our eternal body, and we're ready to make a masterpiece of art with our life because this is what we're here to do. That's why Toltec means artist of the spirit. It's not a religion. It's not definitely not a cult. You know, we don't have an Aztec God or something like that, like people say in the internet, you know. It's just a simple way of life. That's why when I read the four agreements, I felt like it was written personally to me. And Father said that it was written for everybody because it's everybody's book because it's integrity talking to integrity. So with all my love and gratitude, Let's begin living our quest and make with our life a masterpiece of art.